let's continue with dimensioning. What I'd like to do is dimension the distance from the face of studs of this exterior wall to this interior wall. But I have a choice. I can either dimension to the center of the wall or to the face of studs. The problem is, is that this line does not represent the face of studs because in the width of the wall, the thickness of the wall, we've included the sheetrock. So it's going to be easier to dimension to the center of the wall. So remember that we located the interior walls using construction lines, which were locating the centers of the wall. We'll use those to uh, dimension the wall position. So I'm ready, so let's go to annotate a linear dimension. I have my object snaps on, so I can quickly snap to objects. And then I pull this dimension up just above. All right. Let's do the next dimension from the center of this wall to the face of studs. I want to align this dimension with the previous dimension. This is the second layer of dimensioning. Notice that the sum of these two dimensions equal the overall dimension. This is called chain dimensioning. I'm going to continue to do this by locating the openings for the windows and the sliding glass doors. So dimension from the face of studs to the center of the opening. Pull this dimension up to create a third layer of dimensioning and complete the chain to the center. Oops, zoom in a little. Not there. All right. Notice that I'm avoiding dimensions like dimensioning from that opening to this opening. Notice that the dimension doesn't fit very well. The dimension lines cross other lines, and this becomes very um, hard to read. So we avoid this type of dimensioning. I'll escape out of that. I'll continue with the chain dimensioning. So from the center of this wall to the center of this opening, and align it with the third layer of dimensioning. Continue on. And finally, close this chain. So there are the dimensions for along this wall. You should be able to do this next wall over here pretty much the same as I did before. The trickier spots are these areas. The way that we approach dimensioning this part of the house is to avoid dimensioning, for example, inside like this. What happens is when we start stacking our dimensions, we have dimensions that are crossing each other. This is really hard to read. So I'm going to delete these. And what I'll do is take the dimension. First I'll do an overall dimension. Drag this down. And then I can dimension from the face of studs there to the interior wall here. And I can pull that out to create the next layer of dimensioning. And continue on with this style here. So from this center line to that center line, align that dimension. Continuing on.
created a complete chain. Now if I found that I did want to do a, an intermediate layer here, for example, I could just grab that, move it over here, and this would be redundant to put this dimension in. So I probably would not do that. Let me delete this one for that. Now when I'm dimensioning along this wall, along here, I would approach it this way. Dimension from there to there and pull this dimension out. And continuing on, I can do the overall dimension first, align it, then do the intermediate dimensions, bring that out, complete the chain, and this gets me pretty well started on dimensioning.